Vietnamese. I am in my orchard and in my garden. I love singing and I love cooking. So I'd like to invite you to my home where we can laugh and have fun and cook and talk and create something beautiful and delicious. Join me. Many of my friends have said to me over the years, we think you've missed your calling, Denise. You shouldn't have been a singer at all. You should have been a party planner or you should have been a baker. Well, I think I still should have been a singer, but <laughs> I also enjoy cooking. So I want to invite you to my home. I hope you can join us. It's going to be a lot of fun and delicious. Time to get cooking. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the fourth episode of Cooking with Denise. Today's episode is titled Down on the Farm. I'm Denise, and we have a very special hour planned with one of the great luminaries in the creative and the performing arts who's joining us from her farm today. We also have a celebrity commercial, a wine segment by the good Dr. Robert, and a few giveaways. Uh, before we start, I have one really important announcement to make. I wanted to invite you all to celebrate National Arts and Education Week with me, Annette Benning, Josh Groban, and Representative Suzanne Bonamici at a free hashtag because of the arts ed virtual chat on Wednesday. September 16th at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We will be talking about the importance and the impact of arts and education has in our lives and ways that you can get involved in supporting arts education in your local communities. Plus, we will answer some of your questions related to arts education. And you can register at americansforthearts.org backslash arts ed chat. Okay. Our guest chef is an internationally recognized director of opera and theater. Francesca Zambello's American debut took place at the Houston Grand Opera with the production of Fidelio in 1984. She began her career as an assistant director to Jean-Pierre Ponel. From 1984 until 1991, she was at the Skylight Music Theater with Stephen Wadsworth. She debuted in Europe and at Teatro La Fenice in Venice with Beatrice di Tenda in 1987 and has since staged new productions at major theaters, festivals, and opera houses all around the world. She served as artistic director to the San Francisco Opera from 2006 to 2011. Currently, she is artistic and general director of the Glimmer Glass Festival in Cooperstown and artistic director of the Washington National Opera. I was very fortunate. I came from a family who loved theater and music, and I'm sure that's why I ended up being a director. My mother was an actress. My father started as an actor and became a businessman. And so already by age six, I was telling the stories in the basement, making everybody dress up as the characters and directing them. Growing up, I was very fortunate that my father worked for an airline. Because of that, we lived abroad a great deal. And so at an early age, I learned to speak Italian, French, German. And then when I was in university, I took a year abroad in Russia, and so I learned Russian while I was there. So having those languages and that facility with different cultures has been part of my whole DNA and way of working and has allowed me to work in practically every continent by now. 
Francesca is tall, imposing. She has a booming voice, and she is extraordinary at bringing together large groups of people into a single vision, hers. When she laughs, it's very loud. When she's angry, she's very quiet. When she's explaining something, she's extremely articulate and very to the point. I admire Francesca that she's, as we say, always in the now. Francesca really goes for it. She knows what she wants. And I think that's something that I, I really respect and what I intend to learn from spending time observing Francesca. There's no reason that opera today cannot have the same importance that it had through the last four centuries. I am deeply committed to making opera accessible to many people so that it can help transform their lives. I believe passionately in opera as a vehicle for social and emotional change. Francesca, are you there? I can't hear okay, you. Okay, now I'm unmuted. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. I'm so excited. I'm so happy to be here with you. I'm honored. Uh, you know I what? Mean, let's see. All right. The thing is, since we started doing this, I've been surprised at how many people in our profession love cooking. Oh my God, I cook all the time. And right. in my blog, every week I, I publish a recipe. I have never done a cooking show. So like, I'm even a little bit nervous. I hope I don't screw up. No, you won't, it'll be perfect. So when we were talking about this, I know that your schedule is incredibly hectic and you've got a family to look after sometimes. Um, yes. And you have to prepare sometimes meals that don't take a whole lot of time, right? Right, and that's what we're gonna get today is right. a, a, a meal that is quick and that is a dinner that you can prepare very fast and it is with ingredients that are either directly from the place where I am right now in Cooperstown, New York, very near the Glimmerglass Festival or a mile up the road to the nearest farmer. So ready, go. Let's go, we, I'm ready. Okay. We are making two things which are yeah, pretty healthy but definitely heavy on the carbs. They are vegan. Um, first is going to be a pasta with a corn and basil sauce. Uh, and then accompanying that will be a zucchini salad. So pasta, let's go. All right. So something very important. If we are using hard pasta uh, for this dish, I recommend either orecchiette, which is this, or farfalle, okay? The reason I recommend these is they suck up a lot of sauce. You know, you got it. You got to make sure you get a pasta that's going to grab the sauce. Okay, I only like these two brands, Di Cecco and Barilla. So I am going to use the Orecchiette today, which means in Italian, little, ear. little ears, and that is a specialty of Bari of southern Italy. Now my water's boiling on my aga. Make sure that you have put in a lot of salt and olive oil. Uh, salt your pasta early. Don't do it later. Do it now. So orecchiette going in, it's a nine minute thing. At the same time, we're gonna start working on the corn dish that's gonna accompany it. This is a two pan dish, which I love. The pasta pot, and then this is a kind of a, it's not a frying pan, but it's a, you know, caffalon pan that I like because you can mix and throw a lot of stuff into it. It's going on the other burner here. Um, so, pan. so with an aga, mind you, uh, it is also called a braising pan. Yes, with an aga, I don't have gas, so it's kind of like you've got really hot or medium hot. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to you're going to take raw corn, and you're going to cut off uh, about from a couple of ears a bunch of corn and save some on the side. And you're going to dump it in the pan here, dumping it in the pan with some olive oil. Um, and I think in my menu, I specify a couple of tablespoons. I have several kinds of olive oil here. Uh, my okay. favorite is actually from my friend Marion in California who made this. Jessica, do uh, we do the onions first though? 
You can do the onions. I, I actually, you could do them together, but okay. yes, I've said probably do the onions first. Scallions, just the white part of the scallions, okay? Right. So we're gonna get those things sauteing all together, the corn and the scallions. We're gonna put in a little bit of water with that. That can be any temperature, just to make, just to sort of help cook the corn quickly. How much, uh, how much corn are you putting in, would you say? I put in, I put in about uh, almost three ears of corn and I kept out half an ear. Uh, and because we're going to use the half an ear at the end just to saute that with butter. I mean, one of the great things I think about Italian cooking is the mixture of olive oil and butter. So the dish looks like right now that I'm sauteing in, looks like this with the corn and the scallions. Okay. Um, I've got the same thing happening over here. We're all good. You've got the same thing. We're all good. Okay, we're going to let that sort of bubble up a little bit, get corn get cooked, and then we're going to get out our good wearing blender. Everybody's got one of these. Surely you got one when you got married or when you're single. It's like one of your most important first appliances. I'm and using if you're a high bullet. And if, okay, of course you are. Of course, your kitchen is high end. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm like totally impressed. So that is coming to a boil and you can't, I'm sorry okay. you can't see it over the aga, but it's cooking away here. The pasta is cooking. Orecchiette cooks faster than the farfalle. Pasta Francesca, is cooking. How, how, how long do you cook your pasta about for it to be really al dente? Well, whatever it tells you on the box, it usually will say like, 11 minutes al dente is always two minutes back from that because uh -huh. we're gonna we're gonna want to be cooking the pasta later i use the orecchiette uh because i loved bari if you've never been to bari i really been recommend there. it in southern italy uh i was there once working at the tattoo petruzzelli which has since i was there has burnt to the ground i had nothing to do with that um <laughs> it was probably it was probably some smarmy mafia deal. I don't know. Um, so this corn is cooking up nice, and when it gets when it gets pretty soft and the yeah. scallions a little bit sautéed, I'm gonna head to the blender with it. Yeah. How are you doing over there? What are you I'm grating? I'm doing great. I'm, I'm doing great. I just was starting to get going with the zucchini a little bit. Okay. Well, that's um, I'm fine. I'm totally fine. I'm with you. Okay. All right, if we're, if we're speeding along, we're gonna go to the zucchini. Now, zucchini salad. Ugh. The zucchini salad, I recommend that you, uh, you can use nice long ribbons, or you can just use your plain old fashioned vegetable slicer, or you can use the side of the grater. And what you want to do is you want to slice in, I've lost my vegetable peeler, which I love, just a minute. Um, okay. But you've got one right there, I'm sure. Um, here it is, okay. So what I recommend is you really want to get nice long pieces with it. It's just not so much for the taste, but it looks good. So I'm doing everything nicely into the salad bowl. You can also brown a little bit some um, pine nuts. Yeah. Okay. And the salad is coming along here. So I've got most of my zucchini cut up and in here. This is a great dish for now because we all have so much extra zucchini. If That's you can, right. don't use those big, gross zucchini. Try to use the smaller ones like this <laughs> so, that, so that you're not getting all the seeds in the middle. Okay. All yeah, I got I, is the big gross zucchini. Uh, well, That's you should have picked. You should have. You should have picked those. You should have picked those earlier. Okay. <laughs> all right. Now, in your uh, dressing, right? You want to have. This is where you want to use your expensive olive oil, right? You want to use your expensive olive oil, um, peppers, salt, pepper, and one juice of one lemon. Okay, so I would already dress this if you want. Am I going too fast, Denise, or am I going uh, okay? I'm still, I'm hanging. I'm hanging. I'm with you. Okay. I think maybe I may be doing a little bit more zucchini, but uh, it's totally fine. Well, you have more people to feed, although I have a lot I'm of people. I'm going to add this together. 
It's All right. I'm, go I'm going to dress Mormon, this Mormon just because I'm going to toss oil. the – because it's nice if the zucchini oh, gets to sit with it. Sit with the dressing because – the thing that makes this salad you yeah. put in at the last minute is the mint ah. and the nice parm. Do not put the mint in already, Denise. What are you doing? Don't put the mint in. It's not okay. in yet. Not at all. Okay. I'm just mixing up the salad dressing. Okay. I'm, I'm just waiting for the corn to oh. And do if I can tell people something, if you think you can't grow anything, you can grow herbs. Herbs Absolutely. are so easy. I have my whole porch outside is full of herbs. Um, and I, I will say, uh, someone has put up in the screen, buying produce or growing produce and cooking it that day is what makes it taste amazing. So we're going to hold on dressing with this and the parm. And can I just tell people, it's really important to keep your parm wrapped in a damp rag in the refrigerator, okay? Parm okay. is like a wet cheese, actually. Don't let it get dry. Don't let it get dry, okay? All right, so we will be back. So that salad is actually now all ready. Are you so done? Did you add that, the oat well, cheese and everything? No, 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 no. I have, no, no, no. That's the zucchini salad. Okay, I'm going back over to the pasta now. All right. All right. With the, the pasta is getting almost done. How is your corn? Mine is ready to go in the blender. How about we're ready you? over here, too. Okay, so what we're going to do now we're going to, we're going to make make the sauce. Well, that's fine. You can take sauce. You can take pasta sauce, pasta water. So fill your blender Here. with your corn and scallions that have been nicely sautéed. Okay. Uh, and then take a little bit. Of, the pasta is still cooking. It's got a couple more minutes. Right. I just take a little. Take a little thing of the pasta water put it in there and do not burn yourself on your blender this is where i've often had like a, you know a, a trauma or the yeah. blender explodes or something i always think if you've got one of these old-fashioned blenders and if something hot is in it use the pulse feature rather than the mix feature because they won't go up as much so here we go we're pulsing That pasta is looking pretty good up. over there. I'm going to check it in a minute. All right. I'm going to push down this corn, see how it's doing. This is very uh, serious tools here, you can see. All right. Oh, God, this is looking good now. Okay. Let me turn off this. Okay, once your corn sauce is done, how's your corn sauce doing, Denise? We're getting there. I'm getting okay. ready to put it into the blender now. Okay, you tell me when you're in the blender. Yeah. I've got a little more. I'm gonna up oh, now. You can, that's my dog Rome. Appropriate that we're having Italian food. He's in Rome. What's his name? Rome, like the city. Uh, Roma. Oh, okay. The, Rome. Like the capital of Italy. Gotcha. All right, I'm just getting the corn in now, basically. Do you add okay. some starch, starchy water to this? You can add a, add like, you know, a half a cup, a cup, whatever. Yeah. And then put the, excuse me. Rome, stop it. Let me let him out. Come on, outside. All right, let me get over here. I'll give you a minute to catch up. All right. Gonzalez. You know, I couldn't believe, you know, you know, you are your mother's portrait in that. Oh, yeah, we do look alike. Oh, we my do, God. Yes, I look sense. like her. I look like her. It's incredible. Okay. When, ah, good. You're doing it. Okay. And it's okay if it's still a little bit chunky. I was about to say, how creamy do you want that? Let it, it's like, it's almost, it's replacing in a way a, a tomato sauce. And okay, then back so, in your braising pan, yeah. melt a good, good hunk of butter. You want, I'm sorry, 
Back in the braising pan, you want about three tablespoons of butter. Yeah, just melt that now, and then we're going to cook the rest of the corn. We better check our pasta. I'm getting nervous about it. All right. I feel like it might be done. So everybody knows if it's spaghetti, you throw it against the wall, right? <laughs> That's just like Carmen. You know she did. You know she did that with um, when Don Jose would come. She would throw right. the fruit and candy on the walls to attract the flies. So that I love they, that. Did you know that? I love that. May I tell the story about when I first saw you as Carmen? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Well, I don't I'm gonna know. Tell that in a minute because I'm going to take my pasta because it's Orichette. It's just about done. How's yours? Yeah, I'm going to check it out. Okay, now everybody, it's really important to save a lot of pasta water when you drain mm. your pasta because you are going to need that in a little bit. So let's drain. Okay. I'm with you. And I'm keeping some of the water. I'm keeping the pasta on top of here for now because I want to get the rest of that corn cooked. Okay. Let me get my pan here. So we're going to cook the rest of that pasta. Uh, and then we will. Does the rest uh, of the corn, the rest of the corn okay. go in with. Now the take the corn in the pan with the butter. Right. Okay. In the pan with the butter and let it, if it gets brown, that's all the better. Okay. And in here as well, now is the time to put your red pepper, put your red peppers in there. Yeah. And if you like it super peppery, all the better. And if not, fine. You're going to be- I like it I, super peppery. Okay. A lot of pepper. And then of course, salt, but wait for the corn to get brown. Don't, don't mush up this corn yet. You can right. add some salt and pepper here. Do not add any other liquids yet. All right. Don't add the lemon juice or the goat cheese. That comes really in the end. And the goat cheese needs the water. See, I'm putting in a lot of pepper because I love pepper. All right. Okay. We're cooking over here, babe. Yes. How's that? Is it getting brown yet? Mine is Not yet. Okay. So I'll tell the story about Carmen. May I? Oh, gosh. I'm scared. I don't know what you're going to okay. say, but okay. Right. Okay. Well, so it, um, in, uh, I don't know, in the late 90s, I guess, was it? Um, I was directing Verdi's opera Otello at the Munich State Opera, uh, Bayerische Staatsoper. And uh, I did not know Denise Graves, but she was directing, she was singing the title role of Carmen there at that time. And I saw her kind of in the halls backstage and I was like, uh, oh, should I introduce myself, whatever. And so I remember you were staying at the very Zhuzhi hotel up the street from where I was. And so I think I left you a note and said, hello, I'm Francesca Zambello and I would love to meet you. I'm a great admirer and respect your work very much. I'm here directing Otello and uh, could we have a coffee? And so the performances I saw were fantastic, but I remember having a coffee in that lovely hotel in Munich, which I can't, it wasn't like the Fear Yard site, but it was something like that. It was, it, the, you remember that? that? was the Hotel no. Raphael. Do you remember that? Uh -oh, I remember I that Denise because you want to know I remember that? I ran into has Arnold Denise Schwarzenegger frozen? there. Has Denise frozen? Has Denise frozen? I'm going to go back to my oh. corn and, okay. Do you remember that, Denise? Well, I remember the hotel. I remember that it was Hotel Rafael. And the reason I remember that is because I ran into Arnold Schwarzenegger there. Okay. All right. Well, I remember us having definitely a great time and a lovely drink. And uh, I think that was, I think that was about it. Okay. We are now going to assemble our dish, but we're going to take the crunchy corn which is now the corn that's been cooked in the butter and has a little bit of browning on it out because that's going to go in at the end after we mix everything else. Okay. Are you, are you with me? I'm with you, but I wanted to ask you about the sure. spices. I wanted to ask you. Uh -huh. Okay. In fine. addition to the salt and the pepper 
and the basil, which is already so yummy and so delicious, I add a little bit of a special sauce, a special seasoning in there. Okay, My own little excited. seasoning. And what is that? I'm excited to know. Aha, uh -huh. it is called Denise's Opera Blend. It was created for me by the salt table and it's got cool. all kinds of wonderful things in it. I love that. You're gonna send me some? You, be you better believe it. Okay. You better believe it. Oops, that one's not coming up. And I'm Cheryl Milne. And we are cooking. I hope that you are going to watch Cooking with Denise. That's right. It's a fabulous show, and she's amazing in it. So Cheryl and I love to eat. We love to sing, but we also love to cook. That's right. Hang on. I think we need some of Denise's wonderful spices from the salt table. Let's see if we have any here. Oh my gosh, we do. This is amazing. This is the Denise Opera Blend, and it is just like her. It's pretty, it's spicy, it's tangy, it has a little zest. I mean, the colors are beautiful. So let's go ahead and put them on our oh, salmon. Let's, let's do it. Wow, check it out. Oh, that is so pretty. Look at that, all those beautiful colors, a little peppercorn, a little lavender, a little lemon zest. I mean, it's just stunning. Oh, yes, and a little lemon, too. Well, of course. So, make sure that you put a little bit of Denise's Opera Blend in your kitchen from the salt table and watch. Watch Cooking with Denise. How about that? That was fantastic. I love that. I love that. Well, so he sent me the other day, Cheryl Milnes, or as Renata Scotto called him, Milnes, sent me uh, uh -huh. a case of wine, which was incredible. And you told me that oh, you had a funny kind? story about him? Yes. Well, I'm going to say, as a, before I tell the story, just take the crunchy corn out of the pan. Okay. So you've got it. Okay. And then we're going to use our braising pan. Uh, we're going to, I'll tell you the story and then we'll come back and it, it, now we're going to assemble everything, which is exciting. Okay. Um, so I was a very young assistant director at the San Francisco opera and it was a production of Ernani with Montserrat Caballé, Paul Plishka, Cheryl Mills and Luciano Pavarotti. Wow. And, um, Cheryl Mills was amazing, uh, but I remember Rennie rehearsals where Cheryl Mills and Paul Plishka were doing a lot of waiting for Montserrat and Luciano to show up. Um, eventually, Luciano canceled right before the opening, and so uh, there was no tenor, and so as the assistant director, I had to walk the role of Ernani with Montserrat Cheryl Mills and Paul Plishka. Of course, I wasn't singing. The young artist on the side was singing. And I will never forget the maid in the production was Dolores Zajic. No. Yes. No. Um, and I, the tenor, I do not remember who sang from the side, but that was amazing. And Cheryl Mills, he was so funny in the dress rehearsal. And then eventually a tenor showed up. I think it was John Carlo. I can't remember his first name. Chanella. And uh, it was, uh, yeah, that was pretty amazing casting. Anyway, so now we're going to, Denise, if you're good, we're going to put the dish together. Okay. Are we good with that? I'm okay. good with that. While we do that, uh, it brings me to our first giveaway. And that okay. means that the person who can tell us and email to cookingwithdenise at gmail.com what was the 2018 WNO Bernstein production that Francesca directed me in? So again, what was the 2018 WNO Bernstein piece that Francesca directed me in at Washington National Opera? And that's our first giveaway. And that will be some of the Denise Graves Opera Blend Spice. Okay, so now I'm ready to uh, assemble. Okay, so we want to take our pasta. Yes. And we want to just put the pasta into our pan. 
right? Oh, okay. In the pan too. Oh, in the braising pan. Oh, okay, great. Now take our blender and we're going to put all of the, oops, all of the corn sauce on top of the pasta. Put it nicely, nicely on top of the pasta. And now we're going to mix that nicely, of course. Let's mix it super nice. Mixing it all together. And then we're going to add in some lemon juice. Yes. Okay, let's get some nice, everybody's got a good lemon. Do not squeeze lemons by hand. Always use a thing to do it. Get the lemon juice. That helps break down some of the starchy feeling. Okay, lemon juice, the whole juice of one lemon. Okay. Okay, whole juice of one lemon. And then dress it. Now, before we dress it, excuse me, take your good chunk of nice goat cheese. Oh, boy. Okay, mix it in there. This goat cheese is from courtesy of the Beekman Boys, very famous organization up here near us who makes soaps from goat, they make goat's milk, all sorts of goat things. So that's the one thing that's not actually from the farm or from a mile away the farm. Okay. Mix that in, and if you need some extra water, I hope you've kept enough water from your pasta that nice- I do, I've reserved that, and I've got my pine nuts resting. Okay, well your, your pine nuts are for your salad over there. Right. Okay, now the only other, th so mix that all up so that we get to our final two Dress it, three dressing items. First of all, we want to use, I always do this early, nice cut up green ends of the scallions. Mix those in for dressing, looking beautiful. Get your basil out, get your basil out. Okay. Okay, and some people think, I, I'm all for cutting it with scissors. Some people are like, basil should be torn. I'm all for cutting it with scissors. I'm like, enough of you people with the tearing the basil already. Put the basil in. Mix all that together so you get some very, very beautiful looking dish here. And then the final yeah. thing that, add, that adds the red pepper tasting is your nice caramelized corn that goes across the top as a kind of visual dressing. It gets a little red highlight and gives you the corn pieces mixed in with everything. Everything goes in your, again, in your braising dish before you serve it uh, so that we're looking pretty good. Something like this, can everybody see? And you've got a really great vegetarian dinner that's gonna make everybody happy. Well, yes. You serve it from this. Okay, so I'm gonna put that on the counter. I'm gonna close the top of my aga. <laughs> And I'm going to go over um, and finish the zucchini salad or let you catch up. You tell me, Denise. Yes. Uh, I'm, I knew I was going fast. I'm dancing as fast as I can over Well, here. you know, right. the thing is, I, I, Denise, you're like me. If I don't have things ready, you know, I'm either like cook a huge meal, take hours, or yeah. let's get it done in 20 minutes to 30 minutes. That's all I've got. Um, at this point, of course, while you're finishing everything up, you could be setting the table. You can be uncorking the wine. If it's a red wine, you're going to want to let it breathe. So, um, Francesca, or if you, uh -huh. how much time do you get to spend on your farm? Well, since COVID, we have been here since March 15th. Um, then that is my wife, Faith, who is an attorney and also, is also the intern pastor of our church, the First Presbyterian Church of Cooperstown, New York and son Jackson McBride, who is um, in uh, digital school right now. Uh, right. And then Rome, right. who is a Labrador, who you heard him barking before. He's a silver lab and he basically runs the house. So <laughs> normally I would be splitting my time between here and Washington, DC. Did I right. say put in more olive oil? Okay, you're just adding calories. I'm putting a little forward. bit in there. Okay, that's fine. Because this olive oil I get from someone that I know, and it has a low acidity count, which is terrific, and it's very, very creamy. So, okay, um, good. you know, we have, do you have a working farm? Because we've got a working farm here. No, here's what we have here. A lot of herbs, a lot of flowers, and then yeah. a ton, a ton of hay, which is harvested, um, 
by a local farmer for all of their animals. They have uh, pigs, horses, uh, and cows. Dairy. It's a dairy farm primarily. Dairy farm, yeah. All right. So Should we finish farm, off the zucchini thing, or, or how are we doing? Are you? Yeah, oh, what's on your phone? Something really quick about what's happening here at our farm. Oh, fantastic! Is, uh, I'd love to see. Which is a working farm, and we've got. Uh, okay. we're, we're converting it to or organic, and we've got fruit and nut trees, and and I think. Oh my God, that's amazing! Some people have seen some of the al alpaca and the horses, so just wanted to show a little bit about what's happening here on our farm. Okay. Hi, I'm Anna. I'd like to talk to you today about alpaca. Alpaca is a domesticated animal that belongs to the camelid family. It's the cousin of the llama. But the llama is very different from the alpaca in that it was domesticated to be a work animal as opposed to the alpaca, which was raised for its beautiful, luxurious fiber. In fact, it's so luxurious that only Incan royalty was allowed to wear it for many thousands of years. But today it can be found in all kinds of textiles ranging from sweaters, hats, gloves, and mittens. I've been lucky enough to receive beautiful blankets from Robert and Denise from their farm and have been able to use it and turn it into wonderful garments. Um, let me show you just a few things that I've made. Here are a pair of fingerless mitts that I've made uh, with the hand spun from an animal called Bit of Honey. Uh, that's the exciting thing about being a hand spinner and knowing the people who breed the animals, that you actually get to know the animal and see the fiber on them before you get to work with it. It's, it's really a living art, a living hand art, and um, it's, it's quite exciting to work with it and spin it and then turn it into something that can be useful. Lastly, I wanted to tell you a story about this particular fiber. Um, it comes from an animal named Phoenix, and... Um, the story is that uh, Robert and Denise, uh, before moving to the farm, they were renovating the, the structure that was presently on the land, and there was a um, bit of a freak accident, and unfortunately, everything burnt to the ground. Um, the animals were there. They, of course, were very frightened, but thank God nothing actually happened to any of them. Um, a few days later, after when they were feeling so down and devastated about the loss, one of their alpaca um, named brown sugar suddenly gave birth and it was like being reborn something reborn on the land and that was this beautiful male alpaca which they named phoenix and i was so lucky to have been gifted this first blanket from phoenix which of course the first year and by the way alpaca are sheared once a year the first year is always the softest and the most precious so this was a particularly dear gift to me, and I want to thank Robert and Denise so much for all um, of the years of pleasure that this fiber has given me. And although Phoenix is no longer with us, I think of him fondly every time I spin it. Thank you, Robert and Denise. Oh my God, what a beautiful story. Isn't that lovely? Yeah, I'm getting all very clamped. How are you? <laughs> I was absolutely wonderful. All right, well, I, I, I'm i I'm ready to finish off our salad if all you right. are. All right. Okay, so I'm just tossing all the dirty things into the sink. I don't know about you, but I I'm a sort of clean as you go person. I am exactly the same. I think that's, and I'm sure you had the same experience as I did. When we all started, I was living in like uh, a closet in New York City. And it was, you know, being able to cook in that kitchen was always, you had to like clean as you went, otherwise you would have no room with anything. Sure, sure. Uh, I used to live in Hell's Kitchen and would go oh, shopping. Really? And, yeah, I would go shopping in the markets down, you know, in the 30s and there was amazing food there then. Okay, so let's finish off our zucchini salad. We've got the zucchini sliced up here nicely. Yes. And so now we're gonna take all we need and we put um, uh, the lemon juice and the olive oil that are in there, the pine nuts. Now I'm gonna cut up the mint. Yes. Cut. Okay, we love the smell of fresh mint. And then the final thing is going to be to not, don't just grate the parm. If you can, I recommend sort of big shavings for it. Oh, okay. You know, you know what I, I mean? I was grating it, yeah. 
But I understand what you're saying. Yeah. I just think the shavings look better. I agree. I agree. And this way, then you're not like overkill on parm. You've got the goat cheese in in the dish, but you've got the um, got the parm in this. So let's see how this is looking. Oh my god, it smells so good with the lemon. All right. Okay. Oh, I'm losing my earbud. But I don't. Oh. <laughs> okay, earbud in the salad. I'm sure we've all done that on Zoom already. <laughs> uh, so I've got my. Parm nuts in here, the pine nuts. Yes. The dressing and yes. the zucchini. And I am using, which basically means that I am using up all those end of the summer vegetables very, very nicely. Yeah, zucchini is so Look prolific. How nice that looks. so much in the garden right now. My gosh. Oh my God. I, but, you know, of course we can all make zucchini bread and zucchini parm is great to make too instead of eggplant parmesan. All and right. I recommend doing that. If we do this again, darling, um, I recommend don't pleasure. don't fry the zucchini, roast it in the oven so it doesn't get all oily. Oh, okay. Now, all right. All right. So, all right. Call, so we've got our lovely zucchini salad. Right. And I'm going to dish out the pasta. So while you're doing that, we're going to have the good Dr. Robert tell us a little bit about his wine choice. And I want to oh, ask, you, this brings us to our second giveaway, which means that people have to really listen intently to this song because that's key in the next giveaway. Okay? Yep. So uh, good afternoon, everyone, on the East Coast, anyway. So um, I'm just a country doctor, so I'm going to slow this down a little bit because we're talking about wine. And when you talk about wine, everything should be relaxed and slow. All right. So our, our featured wine today is from Leonetti Cellar, um, which is the oldest uh, winery, actually, in Walla Walla uh, Valley in our great state of um, Washington. And this is a, uh, a 2017 uh, vintage, so it's quite young. Um, and it drinks, you know, through um, 2042. Um, it's a wine that um, is wonderful, actually, if you lay it down for a while. But you'll find out in just a moment that this is a special occasion today, and so that's why we're having this wonderful wine. I first discovered this wine um, actually visiting my brother and sister-in-law um, out in Washington. And this is um, a wine that is in high demand um, and the demand outstrips um, the supply. It's sort of like um, the organ supply for transplantation. And so um, actually it's very difficult to get. Um, and most of the product is um, sold to uh, a, a group of uh, limited members uh, to restaurants, and you can buy it in Seattle and some of the other um, cities in Washington, but on the East Coast, it's um, almost impossible to find. Now, I'll give you a little tip. Um, right now, um, because most restaurants are closed in, in the U.S., um, there is an opportunity to buy some wines that are normally not available. And that's how I got these two bottles. Um, and there's various ways to do that through retailers. Um, but th these wines now are, um, are being offered, uh, you know, much more widely than, than normally. Um, so um, we'll, we'll open a bottle. And um, 
The first thing to tell you, when, when you're in a restaurant and um, the waiter hands you the um, cork, usually they'll, they'll lay it down in front of you, um, a lot of people will pick it up and, and smell it. Well, that's, that's really not the way that you, um, you determine the nose of the, the wine. Um, it's really to be uh, looked at. So um, what you're looking for is to see if there's any fungus on the cork or if, it's, if the wine stains come up along the edge of the cork, um, that, that wine you know, might be corked. It, it may have, um, the cork may be loose. So um, I'm going to pour this. And the first thing you'll notice is that um, it's beautiful. It's a gorgeous um, deep red. Um, and it's just lovely uh, to look at. Some people, um, you know, get very sort of fixated on the legs and that sort of thing. Um, but I just think it's a, it's a beautiful deep red wine, um, and it just looks gorgeous. Now, the next thing you want to do after you, you know, um, aerate it a bit is, um, is determine the, the nose of the wine. And indeed, you want to get your nose right in the glass. This, this wine um, has um, dark fruit, so it's, it's primarily a, a, a black cherry. Um, you can uh, smell some cedar. Um, and one thing that's kind of um, unique about uh, the uh, Leonetti wines is um, it has this kind of lavender uh, smell to it, so that's lovely. And you'll also pick up some coffee and uh, caramel as well. So um, now I'll take a little sip. And this is very pleasing on the palate. Um, it's really perfectly balanced. Um, tannin and acid, um, which just gives it a, a, a very lovely feel as it rolls across the tongue and across the palate. Um, now, this is an expensive wine. Um, right now, you, I was able to get this for uh, $100. Um, and I know, you know, right now it's, um, it's a difficult time in the U.S. Um, and there are a lot of people who um, are unemployed and, and this, um, you know, may seem a bit extravagant. Um, but uh, yesterday was our 11th anniversary um, for Denise and I. And so um, this is really a special occasion. And this is a special occasion kind of wine. So, sweetheart, if you'll join me and we'll do a toast. Okay. And um, we'll toast to um, another 40 years of, uh, of marriage. Now, did you say four? 40. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought he said four. <laughs> Now, you know, it's interesting. So I, I initially talked about the, the, the appearance of the wine um, and then the nose and then the palate. And, sweetheart, I still I'm, need you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I'm trying to get something ready. And, I'm here. And so another question is, um, it, this isn't a daily double or anything, but why do we clink our glasses together um, when we toast? Is this a test? So you want to, when you drink wine, you want to engage all your senses. Oh, right. So the hearing as well. Hearing is, is the, so the only missing, missing one. Oh. So anyway, sweetheart. Here's one. Another lovely year gone by and many, many more in our future. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. 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 All right. I wasn't expecting that. That was quite the surprise. <laughs> now, um, okay. So special occasion wine, lovely wine. They have a lot of different... Um, varieties. I love their Merlot. It's gorgeous. But now I want to show you this wine because this is my go-to wine. This is my sort of, you know, weekend wine. Um, it's called Conundrum. And um, it's produced by um, the, uh, the, the Wagner family. 
um, who also makes Camus. So Camus is their high end. Conundrum is a blend. Um, it's a blend of uh, uh, Cab, Zin, and a Petit Syrah. And it is a gorgeous wine um, that um, retails for about $18. Um, and um, you, can, uh, you can buy it um, in the wine store um, for probably $22. This, this drinks like a $40 bottle of wine. So this is really the, the secret of the day, um, which is this gorgeous wine that, um, that you know, most people can afford um, and is just a, a, a lovely wine really for anything. Um, so, you know, with pasta, you can, you, you can drink um, both red or white. I would, as you know, I prefer red wine. So that's what we're having today with, um, with this feast. Thanks so much, honey. That's wonderful. Is Cheska there? That's wonderful. Yeah, no, no, I'm like all like more fair <laughs> happy anniversary. It, it came as quite the surprise uh, for me too. I had no idea what he planned. So uh, I'm gonna have to open some. So I've got mine okay, all very good. here and salad already, and I'm gonna probably open some red wine. I don't think it's a little early for us to be eating this, but um, I'm sure that everyone in the house will enjoy it later. And it's just so fun oh. to be with you and be with so many friends out there who are watching. Thank you for all your comments. And and so do you, you will post online uh, these incredibly simple recipes that do not take a lot of time. They really don't take a lot of time. Uh, and the only other thing I want to share with everybody is, which came in the mail, is a reminder about voting. Uh, do not forget to vote. And there's plenty of early ways to vote no matter where you live. This is one of the most important actions that we can take as citizens of this country. So is it okay if I stuck that plug in there? Absolutely. I wasn't being political, I'm just saying to vote, okay? Absolutely. Francesca, thank you so much. It was kind of fat, it was fast and action packed this time with you. You know, I didn't tell you what happened. Just before the show started, we lost electricity here. And so we lost the, we lost the use of the stove, the oven, everything. And so I, we were running around and there was a whole lot of swearing going on on Sunday, which was awful and a, a whole Whoa. lot of stress. And just before we came on, we got it back. So I was a bit, I was a bit frazzled. But uh, anyway, thank you so much for being here. This has been amazing. This dish looks fantastic. These dishes, I cannot wait to get into them. And also okay. for the people who listen to the song, the second giveaway is this. If you can email to cookingwithdenise at gmail.com and tell us which group, what singing group was singing the song to the intro to Robert's wine segment. Then you will get a bottle of wine. Honey, Ooh. I want to the first winner. So the first winners um, were Alan Savada. I know that. Hey, Alan, how you doing? Hey, Alan. You're amazing. You know Alan. Uh, who were the other? Uh, Ellen Young. Ellen Young. DeAndre Simmons. DeAndre Simmons, who's been, oh, DeAndre Simmons, yes. So those were the winners of, of the first uh, giveaway. So congratulations to you all. And now we're gonna serve this up. Max, if you and Quinn wanna come over here and tell us how it has been. I just wanna say to everybody that I know that the past seven months have been hard. There's been um, immense hardship and devastation. And it has also made us smarter, though more creative and less wasteful. And we are grateful for our lives. We are grateful to have found bright spots in our kitchens. Okay, um, Max, here we're gonna go. Here we're gonna go. You, you and Quinn, this is my son Max, everybody, the beautiful Max. So I wanna say to you all to make time in your every day to give yourself something beautiful. Be sure to tune in tonight for LB to sit down with Lawrence Brownlee. And for those who enjoy this, thank you so much for tuning in. And be sure to go to YouTube and like us and subscribe to the channel. And Max and Quinn can tell us what they think about this. Francesca, I love you so much for doing this. It was so much fun. It was a bit crazy on this end. But uh, no, well, Denise, I, I love you, as you know. And uh, your words couldn't be truer, I think. 
uh, we're all undergoing so many different things, but sharing the joy of our loved ones and our families, um, let us count our blessings every day. That's what I'm trying to do. And you know, for those of you who love opera, please be there for us online, but please be there for us when we're back at the Washington National Opera or at the Glimmerglass Festival. Thank you so much. That's right. Thank you, Francesca. Okay, Max, what's the verdict? You and Quinn. I never knew anything vegetarian to be this good. <laughs> <It's delicious. laughs> this is really good. We're carnivores yeah. over here. Yeah. <laughs> is it good? Mm -hmm. oh. Great. Yeah? Awesome. Take time in your life to give something beautiful to yourself, everybody. Here's to life.